the diabolical story of one of World War II's deadliest females and the hundreds of soldiers that died by her hands. In the midst of the chaos that defined World War II, one extraordinary woman stood against the tide, shattering expectations and emerging as a force to be reckoned with. This is the gripping narrative of Nieves Fernandez, a lone female guerrilla leader whose undying spirit and cunning tactics earned her the title The Silent Killer. This video will unravel the intense historical events and the horrors that drove her to take drastic measures against the Japanese occupation. Stick around for a riveting exploration of a lone female guerrilla leader whose remarkable feats left an irreversible mark, prompting authorities to put a bounty on her head. Viewer discretion is advised as we uncover the untold story of Nieves Fernandez, showcasing not just the dark times of history, but also the incredible courage and resilience of one woman against all odds. Now, let's rewind to the 1930s, when World War II was in full swing. As the Empire of Japan expanded its military and economic influence, conflicts with Western and Asian nations, especially the United States, intensified. Regardless, within a short period of time, the Japanese began expanding their territory into Asia. To be more specific, the occupation of the Philippines took place between the years 1942 and 1945, despite the fact that both Americans and Filipinos put up fierce resistance. In the midst of this horrifying invasion, the city of Tacloban, on the northeastern tip of Leyte Island, fell into Japanese hands. Cue our protagonist in this chaotic narrative, Nieves Fernandez, a schoolteacher who would soon take center stage in this turbulent chapter of history. There's very little information available about her early life, other than the fact that she was born in Leyte, Philippines, around the year 1906. She was most likely of Waray descent, and judging by a photograph that we believe to be of her, she may have been married. Despite the limited details, one aspect of her life shines bright. She was a cherished teacher, known affectionately as Miss Fernandez by her students and colleagues. Nieves Fernandez was known for her dedication and passion for education. Now let's dig into the why behind her transformation into a guerrilla leader. To unravel this, we must first focus on the atrocities committed by Japanese soldiers in the Philippines. A quick heads up, some of the following content may be disturbing and distressing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. With that said, let's continue. The Japanese occupation of the Philippines during World War II was marked by brutality and human rights violations. Over a thousand Filipinos, including mothers, girls, and young gay men, some of whom were as young as 10 years old, were imprisoned against their will and were exploited as comfort women. These people were forced to endure sexual slavery at the hands of Japanese military personnel while they were confined to places that were referred to as comfort stations. The conditions in these comfort stations were deplorable, with the victims subjected to physical and psychological abuse on a daily basis. Many of them suffered long-lasting trauma and were scarred for life. And that's only the beginning. The story gets worse from here. Many innocent civilians were kidnapped and subjected to routine gang rapes, torture, and humiliation. Some individuals were mutilated, which included the horrifying act of having their breasts removed were suffering severe wounds when they resisted the advances of the soldiers. A great number of victims were eventually murdered and treated as if they were disposable entities. The Japanese forces dispatched doctors and surgeons to the Philippines, engaging in grotesque human experimentation on native Filipinos. These experimentations included amputations, dissections, and stitching of blood vessels on live human subjects. They even went to the extent of having the victims dig their own graves before surgeons performed vivisections, aka live dissections, aka being cut open while still alive. These horrifying acts of violence and cruelty were carried out without any regard for civilian lives or dignity. In some instances, dissected bodies were reassembled while the victims were still in their senses. In other cases, dissected victims were left with open stomachs dumped into graves alongside their intestines and left to die. These acts of brutality were not only physically torturous, but also deeply dehumanizing. Despite the unimaginable nature of these atrocities, Nieves Fernandez 
may have reached her breaking point when the Japanese closed her school and informed her that the Japanese army intended to use the female students as comfort women, sex slaves. This was probably when the line between educator and warrior blurred and drove Fernandez to form an anti-Japanese guerrilla group of 110 men. Fernandez wasted no time. She started assembling a squad of men who shared her burning desire to settle the score with the Japanese. Each of the 110 men carried their own tales of loss and suffering at the hands of the occupiers. Together, they embarked on an intense training regimen, honing their skills in guerrilla warfare. Ambushes, sabotage, and intelligence gathering became their daily grind, all with one unwavering goal – to protect their community at any cost. Fernandez, once an educator, had now become the leader of a formidable force fighting for justice. They carried out many secret attacks against the Japanese army. They played it smart, targeting important spots and supply routes with precision. The Americans dubbed them the Gas Pipe Gang, and for good reason. These guerrilla warriors turned everyday items like gas pipes into shotguns and whipped up DIY grenades using gunpowder and nails, transforming their meager three American rifles into a fully loaded arsenal. Talk about ingenuity at its finest. Now let's talk about their go-to weapon, the bolo knife. Fernandez gave her team a crash course on using it with finesse, swiftly taking down enemies. What's a bolo knife, you ask? Imagine a long knife designed for slicing through plants like a machete. In their hands, it became the ultimate tool for covert operations. But wait, there's more to the story. In Filipino culture, a history of tribal traditions involved beheading enemies and performing rituals with their heads. Tribal warriors proudly showcased special tattoos to boast about their successful headhunts. Surprisingly, this headhunting tradition persisted during World War II. Instead of guns, Filipino warriors ambushed the Japanese in forests, bringing back their heads. They even added a touch of black magic, performing ceremonies and putting the heads on spikes to ward off future attacks. This was not just a fight, it was a blend of tactical brilliance and cultural resilience. But why the emphasis on silent kills? Why was Fernandez nicknamed the silent killer? The technique Fernandez was demonstrating involved cutting the corroded artery and the internal jugular, leading to a quick and almost instantaneous death by stabbing sharply into the soft spot below the earlobe and giving a sharp upward thrust while twisting the blade. The knife entered the base of the victim's brain, causing instant unconsciousness. The twisting also prevented the victim from screaming ensuring that if done correctly, the only sound would be the physical struggle, and the attack from behind took care of that from the start. It was a deadly combination of skill and strategy. During guerrilla night raids, Fernandez would wear a black dress to camouflage herself and walk barefoot so the enemy could not hear her coming. She utilized her knowledge of the local terrain and established a network of informants to gather intelligence on enemy movements. South of Tacloban became the place where Fernandez and her guerrillas conducted their war. As time passed, they leveled up, scoring Japanese weapons and more American guns. For two and a half years, our 38-year-old Wonder Woman sprinted through the city barefooted, orchestrating ambushes in the forest, and became the only female guerrilla commander in the entire Philippines. Under her command, the guerrillas took down over 200 Japanese soldiers, rescued comfort women, and busted prisoners out of Japanese camps. With exploits like that, they started calling her Captain Fernandez. The Japanese authorities even put a bounty on her head – 10,000 Philippine pesos. But guess what? Our hero escaped capture, surviving three wounds and sporting a scar on her forehead. When the Americans rolled in to liberate the province in 1944, they discovered that Fernandez and her warriors had already liberated a bunch of villages in Tacloban by wiping out the entire Japanese presence in the area. A photograph from that period captures Fernandez demonstrating her method of using a bolo knife in combat in front of American soldiers. It is believed that she witnessed the full liberation of the Philippines in 1945. But what happened to her after the war remains uncertain, though rumor has it that she lived well into her 90s in Tacloban surrounded by her sons and grandchildren. And there you have it. If you found this story as captivating as we did, hit that like button, share the excitement, and definitely subscribe to History Spotlight. Your support is the secret sauce that keeps our time-traveling tales coming your way.
Stay tuned for more incredible historical narratives, and thank you for being a part of the History Spotlight community. Until our next time travel adventure, stay curious, stay awesome, 